and here comes the dead pirate Robin. started I know we're getting a little bit more in a routine but just as a reminder when we do communion the way that will work is you'll kind of move in this fashion and then around is how we'll move you will grab your communion elements here and return to your seat and then we will commune together is how that will work okay um, other announcements, just a quick reminder, um, it's not clear with the changing county and state guidelines as to how long we'll continue to do anything for that matter, but I wanted to say that for now, we're going to continue to RSVP as you have, and just a reminder that that RSVP form is just for the coming Sunday. So starting in tomorrow's uh, e-note, you'll see that, or always on the home page of the website, you'll see a form there that you can click on. Uh, it's one of the picture slides, actually. You'll see a picture of all of us out here in worship and click on that and that'll allow you to sign up. Um, I wanted to mention as well, not this Wednesday, but a week from Wednesday, we're gonna have a new adult uh, education opportunity at seven o'clock on Wednesday nights. It's going to be focusing on Luther Small Catechism. There is a, a resource we'll make available for people to come and pick up somehow. And uh, we're gonna take a look at it over a seven week period of time. It is probably the core important how to live life as a Christian uh, document in our tradition, and it should be a great discussion. I'm also mindful right now that Martin Luther, during the period of the Reformation, was living during the time of the plague. So it seems oddly additionally appropriate, so uh, for whatever that's worth. I wanted to mention in regards to offering, I know you'll be very relieved that we now have an offering box on the table. So um, if you do physically bring an offering, I would invite you to leave it in there when you leave, as opposed to when you come, just so it'll be easier for us to keep an eye on during the service. But uh, that's an opportunity, text to give, of course, as well as mailing a check or going to our website and clicking the give a gift, that all works. That's probably plenty. So please stand as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. 
for you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you, for you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people. He will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests but when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. Then he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So this time of year, we get a lot of these end time kind of parables. These are recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, which was written probably about the year 80. So about 10 years after the leveling of Jerusalem, when Jerusalem was burned to the ground, the Temple Mount cleared, if you want a sense of how devastating that was, if you can think of a classic image of a menorah that you might see prominently during the time of Hanukkah, the only reason that we know what the menorah looks like in Jerusalem in the temple from the time of Christ is because it is carved into the arch, the victory arch in Rome 
of the Roman soldiers' defeat of Jerusalem. And there is a a series of images of the soldiers plundering the temple, and one of them is carrying the menorah. That's how complete the devastation was. It's a profound sense that this would be just in the immediate... uh... (laughs) Go for it, John. (laughs) It's good there's a breeze. One of the things when we think of this destruction is that these parables speak strongly kind of in the wake of that destruction. So let's talk this parable through from front to back. There's a lot of details in it, right? So when we look at this parable, we start out with a king whose son is getting married. This is a big deal, right? You would think this would be the hottest ticket of the year, right? This would be the best meal you've probably had in years. This is probably the biggest event, the kind of thing that you would tell stories to grandchildren about, right? Well, back when the king's son got married, wow, there was this huge, huge party. So the invitations go out to everybody that you would expect. The who's who. Everybody that should have been invited was. And so the invitations went out and they were received and kind of went straight to the recycling. This is where the story starts to turn strange. The first part of it, King, whose son is getting married, big party, sending out invitations. We're like, okay, got it, tracking. And then the invitations are declined. Like, who are these people? The King then says to his slaves, look, we've got a We've got to go out and get them to come because we've already started putting stuff on the grill. There's no going back. This this train has left the station. So they go out again to send out the invitations. And the invitations this time are declined forcefully. You notice it escalates quickly in about 10 words. It starts with, wow, I just painted a room and I've got to watch the paint dry. There's grass that I've got to watch grow in my backyard. But then you notice it goes quickly to the messengers being mistreated and killed and killed. This is a powerful image because for one, it's so disproportionate to what's happening, right? This invitation to this amazing feast and this violent response to the invitation. The images in this uh, parable are largely of the religious establishment. Those who in Jerusalem routinely were invited by God into deeper relationship and a perception that they had often said, that's too much, not now, I'm not doing that. I think it's important that as Christians looking back, that in some ways we put ourselves in that same boat too. The religious establishment who says, God, I appreciate that you're gracious and want to invite people, but not all the people. Can we take these people off the list? Did they have to be invited, really? We often respond that way as well. Now, this would be a sad story at this point, right? And so the next line, if we were writing the story, would be, the king went into his bedroom and cried into his pillow for days. The food was ruined. Nobody came. That's kind of how it would go, right? Except the way the text reads, it doesn't say that the king was sad or disappointed or hurt. The text is very explicit. The king was enraged, enraged, leveled their city, thinking about the timing of this being written, the leveling of Jerusalem, leveled their city, and it just got worse from there. Now, That seems kind of extreme, right? The images that we have of God are more the, you know, carries the lambs, loves the children, this kind of thing. Not so much the raising of cities and all kinds of stuff like that. That makes us a bit uncomfortable. But the the parable pivots at this point in a direction that's more familiar to us. So the king turns to his servants again and says, okay, change of plan. Those clowns weren't worthy of what we're doing. So I want you to go into the streets 
and invite literally every person you can find or see. Invite every last one. And the text very curiously says, the good and the bad. So suddenly, there's a party. The wedding banquet hall is filled to capacity. There's all kinds of people who are excited to be there. All kinds of good things are happening. And that's the next spot where we kind of want to end the story, right? That there's this great party. Everybody's having a great time. This huge feast. As Christians, certainly when we think of this feast of the king celebrating the sun, we immediately turn to our celebration of the Eucharist, which in this life we say is a foretaste of the feast to come, or maybe in light of the parable today, we might say it's the rehearsal dinner, right, of the feast to come, is kind of the sense of things. But sadly, that's not where the parable ends, does it? The parable doesn't end there. The parable ends with the king wandering around through the hall. We can picture this, right? Thanking people for coming. So glad you're here. You know, kind of working the room a bit like you might. And then something happens. The king sees a guy who is there without his wedding robe on. Seems like an oddly detailed twist late in the story, right? Just when you think it's wrapping up, there's suddenly this whole new theme. The king goes up to this guy and says, friend, which I've discovered in parables is always kind of an awkward greeting. There's usually something that's going to be kind of tough coming up after that. How did you get in here without a wedding robe? Now, this is where scholars start to go all over the place to try and explain why this poor guy didn't have a wedding robe. Well, maybe he was poor. Maybe he showed up late. There's all kinds of things about why he's not wearing a robe, but the text is very clear in what is there and what is not there. First off, it says the man was speechless. Normally, he would say, I don't have one. And then what would the king do? Friend, this is your lucky day. I have an extra one in my closet. Let me help you. That's not how the text goes. The man is speechless which gives us the strong sense that he was perfectly able to show up with a wedding robe, but did not. And so the king does what every king then does, right? He asks the man to leave. No, he doesn't ask the man to leave. He has his servants bind the man hand and foot and throw him out into the outer darkness, where there is, of course, wailing and gnashing of teeth, right? I mean, what else do you have an outer darkness for, right? But it's brutal. It's brutal. And what are we doing with this parable and putting all of these pieces together here? I think there's a couple of things that we need to be reminded of as we look at this parable. For one, the king's joy and celebration at the wedding of his son As Christians, we might think of the image of Christ and the church, that it is a joy and that everyone has been invited. Now, there are some missing links in this everyone. The invitation that is being extended by God is an an invitation that we are making. In many ways, we are wearing the shoes of the servants in this text going out and inviting everyone that we find to come to celebrate the feast and celebrate the sun. We're gathered here today to celebrate this feast as we gather. But sometimes we don't get it right. Sometimes we're like the folks in the beginning of the parable. Sometimes we like to edit the list that God gives us. Sometimes we like to maybe skip certain neighborhoods or zip codes when we invite. It's interesting because it doesn't happen every year, but today, National Coming Out Day falls on a Sunday, today, which to me is embodied in this sense of welcome. If there was more openness and welcome, would that day be so monumental as it is? And it's indicative of those who have been invited by God to 
to enter into the celebration and who have frequently found doors that have been closed, doors that have been locked to them. Now, the last part of this story with the man being thrown out into the outer darkness, where does that leave us? I think the piece when I look at this man is that Matthew in particular can make us a little uncomfortable in that our relationship with God is a relationship where we receive mercy and grace and joy, but that God wants to be in relationship with us in such a way that we change the way in which we live our lives as well. We hear that in the, in the second reading that's assigned from Philippians today, how we are to act with honor, how we are to act with justice, there are all kinds of ways in which we are to act that's maybe symbolized in a small way by simply showing up to the feast with our wedding robe on. There are powerful themes in this text that ought to challenge us that God wants to be in relationship with us, that God invites all people to the feast to celebrate the Son, that we are called to invite as God has invited not as we might choose to invite. And that as we enter into this relationship with God, we are being called to change the way in which we live, to open our hearts towards God, to open our arms towards our neighbor. Amen. Amen. No, you're staying seated. That's right, yes. stand as you are able. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated. Make us worthy stewards of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as you set a table for all people, give us joy in the breadth of your beautiful creation. May we open our hearts and communities to all your children, especially mindful on this national coming out day of the LGBT community who have sought to answer your invitation and welcome and have found the church's doors closed to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. We ask you to be with all those we name in our hearts or out loud now.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community, especially Ecumenical Hunger Program and South Palo Alto Food Closet. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, as we approach election day, guide all candidates that they may strive to be just in purpose, wise in counsel, and unwavering in duty. May they uphold the honor of our nation, secure the welfare and protection of all people, and always be looking, working toward the common good. Make us who come from many nations with many languages a united people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Feel free to share the peace without leaving your chair. <laughs> peace. Peace be with you. Peace. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give our thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Feasting God, as we share in this wedding banquet of Christ and your church, draw heaven and earth together as one in you. Send your Holy Spirit to sanctify this bread and cup, to make them for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Faithful God, receive the supplications of your church and bestow upon your children the peace that passes all understanding. Hasten the day when every heart and mind in union with Christ Jesus shall rejoice in that perfect peace of your kingdom and be made eternally new in your image. Trinity of grace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So in one minute here, you can stay standing. I'll be set up. And we'll just kind of make a circular motion here and return to your seats, just keeping distance. In this basket here are bags that have single serving gluten free. So if you need a gluten free, go ahead and take one of these bags instead of one of the cups from the trays. But otherwise you're taking your communion elements back to your seat and we will commune together once we've all returned to our seats.
please stand. We heal off the first tab. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Just a quick reminder, as you leave or as you visit here, make sure you keep good distance uh, as we finish up. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.